So welcome back to the Building Your Portfolio Crash Course. Jim Schultz here with you guys, and we are about to dive into episode number two, the power of using indexes first. Back in episode number one, right, we kind of built up our foundation looking at portfolio theta, looking at portfolio delta. Well, what we're going to do now as we look out to build out the specific positions in our portfolio, we're going to start to fill in some of the mortar between those foundational bricks. So let's do it, man. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in to episode number two, the power of using indexes. So the real power behind using indexes it's actually really simple. It's going to give you a smoother ride from start to finish. Basically, by definition, this has to be the case, right? Because when we look at indexes, we're talking about, you know, S&P 500, you know, NASDAQ, you know, Dow, and all these other guys. These guys, by definition, are comprised of hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of different individual stocks. Now, formally, this difference between indexes and individual stocks is referred to as systematic risk and unsystematic risk in the academic ranks of finance. Now, keep in mind that these labels are a lot more theoretical than they are practical. So for us as traders, we need to slow ourselves down a bit before we attach too much weight to what we have here. But nevertheless, these are very, very useful when it comes to understanding the differences between indexes and individual stocks. Now, systematic risk or market risk, this is the risk that is inherent in simply having some capital at stake in the financial markets. It is unavoidable and in many ways, it's simply a cost of doing business. Now, unsystematic risk or single stock risk is very different. This is going to be risks that are unique or individual to that one specific stock. Therefore, they are avoidable and they only become relevant if you happen to have a position on in that particular equity. All right, easy enough. Well, let's dive in a little bit deeper and work through some examples of each one of these guys. So starting with market risk, some common examples would be economic data, global growth or lack thereof, or maybe interest rates. Obviously, these numbers can have varying impacts and hit some indexes more significantly than others. But the idea is still that these risks are spread over the different stocks that make up the index. Now, single stock risk is a little bit different with some common examples being an earnings report, maybe a product or service success or failure, or really any major company news. These are only going to impact one or a small group of stocks significantly. While any stocks that are not directly impacted or related to these events, they're just going to go on business as usual. Therefore, by focusing on indexes first before you dive into individual stocks, you are only going to be exposed to market risks. So then, by definition, as a result of that, you are naturally going to have or you can expect to have a much smoother ride from start to finish. All right, fair enough. But you might now be asking, Jim, which indexes should I focus on? Well, let's have a look. So let's think about the indexes in three different levels. Now, these aren't formal or official levels. They're really just for us. But I think it will help to demarcate between the different kinds of indexes. So level one, these are going to be your major equity players. SPY, the S&P 500, QQQ, the NASDAQ, IWM, the Russell 2000, and DIA, the Diamonds, or the Dow Jones. Level two, these are going to be your major non-equity players like GLD, which is gold, like TLT, which is bonds, like USO, which is oil, and SLV, which is silver. And then lastly, level three, these could be considered your international indexes or maybe your sector indexes like EWZ, which is Brazil, and FXI, which is China, and then XLE and XLU and a number of other X indexes that represent different sectors in the U.S. economy. Now, of course, this was not an exhaustive list that was intended to represent every single index that you could potentially trade, but 
I do think it's a reasonable starting point. Now that you have this, lean on this list, use this list, and turn to all the strategies and the tools that you already have in your back pocket when it comes to stock screening, strategy selection, or trade entry. And if you don't happen to have any tools or strategies in your back pocket, then hey, let me offer up a shameless plug for our very first crash course from last fall that will help you do exactly that. Wow, so believe it or not, but you already made it to the end of episode number two inside of this crash course, The Power of the Index. Guys, if I can help in any way, shape, or form, please reach out to me. You can email me. Connect on Twitter. I'm just at jschultzf3. Either way would be a great way to reach out to me with any questions or comments or anything that you might have that you want to discuss. Some of you at this point, however... You might be thinking, Jim, wait a minute. What if I don't see enough opportunities with indexes? What if I don't see enough opportunities with indexes to hit my portfolio theta or portfolio delta goals, the very same goals that you showed me how to do back in episode one? You know, guys, it's almost like I've done this before because I had a sneaking suspicion that you might have that question. So I suppose I will see you in episode number three, adding individual stocks. We'll see you there.